right, hello everybody. Um, welcome to um, Oliver. Oliver, the little um, otter that we're going to be drawing today. Um, he's a bit of a scallywag, I think, and um, I hope we're going to have lots of fun with him. Uh, look at all those whiskers. So, um, yeah, really looking forward to it. The first thing I thought I would do um, would be to show you, because some people obviously are coming on here um, and are complete beginners, and um, you know it, it's a question that a lot of people ask, well, how do I actually get started? So the best way to get started if you're a beginner, um, obviously freehanding is great, um, but just giving yourself a bit of help and doing a, um, a small, very basic outline to start with um, will help you immensely. Okay, so to start, we have a piece of tracing paper. Any old tracing paper will do, it doesn't have to be a specific sort. And I've got a little printout of our otter here, um, just so we've got him underneath. So that's the size that we're going to be drawing. It's roughly A4. Okay, just make sure you can see everything. So I've um, put the two together and um, we want to keep it nice and we don't want it slipping, otherwise it's going to, parts of it are going to go all over the place. So I'm just going to secure it at the bottom there. And I'm going to use an ordinary HP pencil just to create an outline. Now you'll notice I don't tend to do hard rigid lines. I'm not a fan of hard rigid lines in any type of um, animal portraiture. I just do a couple little dots here and there. And then I show exactly where the outside edge is, where the fur is. It's just a great base for you to start from. Okay, so we've got that. And then here, not, I'm ignoring all the whiskers. We'll be doing those and enjoying those later, hopefully. <laughs> okay, and then we're going to just get the eye in. The eye is the most important one. The one that's gonna give you the feeling that um, you're creating a little soul. There we go. And then that's kind of there. It's got a bit of a grumpy looking eye there. And it's funny because I was saying to my husband this morning, what shall I call him? Because I call all my animals a name. And he said, Oliver. And my husband's exceptionally grumpy. So I think this is going to be a grumpy little otter in, in keeping with him. But we like a bit of grumpy, don't we? Right, okay. So I'm just making some very basic marks. So I've done, obviously, sort of holes where the nose are, holes where the eyes are. Um, this is its little mouth. You can do more information if you want to. The only thing I'd say is sometimes, don't confuse yourself. If you have an outline that is too um, complicated with lots and lots of lines everywhere, you can get confused as to what line is what and it does take some of the fun away from it. So I do, do tend to just do, do something very basic just to help you get started, to take the fear away. And then from there, um, we'll be freehanding the rest. Okay, so that's, um, so I've used my HB pencil on the tracing paper. Um, and now all I'm going to do, so I've not got any um, paper that I'm actually gonna be drawing on yet. Um, that's nowhere to be seen. I'm literally going to take our little Ollie away. And you can see what a basic outline that is. So that's all you need. Just something to give you an idea of how to get started. Now we're gonna turn it over, okay? So we're now working back to front because this section here is the section that we want to come out onto the paper that we're actually going to be drawing onto. So it's like a three part process. It's first of all getting the outline, which we just did. Then you turn it over and we're going to be putting pastel on the back here. So then when we turn it back over again and press into our paper that we're actually going to be drawing onto, it's the pastel that comes out, not the graphite. I don't like a load of graphite on a pastel um, portrait. It gets very messy and can be quite difficult to get rid of. So, now give me a moment, let's get this within view. Okay, so what I will do, because we've actually, the, the card that we're going to be bringing um, Ollie out onto is a brown pastel matte um, um, board. 
um, we need something that shows up so there's no point doing it um, in a colour that's too similar to this colour because it won't show up. So we're going to, um, I think we're just going to use white and brown. Let's have a look. Okay. So the first one that I will do for the outline is just kind of go over um, with white. It's the 101 by Faber-Castell. I'm using all Faber-Castells today. I thought it'd be um, quite interesting to do a very sort of basic study in pastels for anyone that's thinking of trying them um, and doesn't want to sort of splash out on loads of different brands and or perhaps just has some um, uh, Faber-Castell pit pastels. Um, so it's just the, um, just the one set of of pencils that we're going to be using. It's not even a set. I'll give you all the the uh, the, de the details on the um, materials list. Uh, but this is the 101. It's the white, and I'm literally doing nothing more interesting than going over the back with pastel. So I'm pressing quite firmly to make sure there's plenty of pastel that will come out when we need it to. Around the eyes, I might just use a. Um, I want a 177 or do I want a slightly dark one? I'm going to go for the 175. Um, it's sort of like a dark brown, really. And I'm just going to go very carefully over the little lines that I just made in brown. Just because we know that this is a very dark area, so if we do it in white, we've then got to spend some time getting rid of the white. So why not do it in brown to start with? And I think these are in brown. We know that the nostrils are in brown too. So let's just get those over there. This is a sort of a darker section where the um, where the sort of darker fur is hitting the lighter fur. And let's just do some there. And then the middle of this uh, little mouth, I'm going to go over in white, just because it's not, it's not very, very dark, that section. And I'll probably go over in white with the rest. It doesn't matter if you get some pastel on areas that aren't, um, that don't have the, the, the drawing behind it. It's more important to get sort of plenty of pastel there so that you can press through. And so it's only going to be a very, very rough outline. Nearly there, we've already gone over these. I'm just going over them again. Could have done that in brown, doesn't really matter. You know, if you miss one of these little strokes off, it's not going to matter, you can see the rest. I view it like a map, you know, it just gives you, you're not instinctively going to know which way you're going and a map just points you in the right direction. I think that is about it. Okay. So then now we turn it over and we pop it onto the actual pastel mats board that we're going to be drawing on. Now what we're going to do is get our little otter, little Ollie, and actually press him on to uh, the pastel mat that we've chosen for him. So I'm using Claire Fontaine pastel mat board, um, which is my favourite, and it's a favourite for a lot of pastel artists. It's beautiful, um, a beautiful board. Um, and this is the... Um, it's a brown colour actually, it's just called brown. I also use the dark grey quite a lot, but in this instance I'm going to use the brown. And I'm just having a think about where I want him to be. I'm just going to um, zoom out a little bit just to show you. Um, I kind of want him central so then I can kind of choose exactly where I want the mount and I can trim it to shape um, so that I'm creating lots of sort of space around him. So that's to press him on to the pastel. Um, nope, it would help if I had it the right way around. There you go, I would have been doing it the wrong way. It's um, obviously, we did the initial outline. This is the way around that he's gonna be. We did the initial outline and then we put the pastel on the back. And now we're just gonna press him into the surface. 
Okay, so that's that on there. And then, I'm not too worried about that. I'm literally just gonna be pressing an outline in. So that will do for now. Let's see if I can zoom in a bit more. Okay, that's cool. Let me just bring it up a little, uh, down a little bit. There we go. Okay. So it doesn't really matter what you use at this point because this is not this is only going on the tracing paper, not on the actual um, pastel mat. Um, now all I'm literally going to do is just fairly firmly and with a pencil, let's push that pastel that we that we put on the back. Let's push that in and be a little bit more determined in the area where the eye is because that's really important. little nose in, so cute. And take some time as well while you're doing this to sort of really look at him, really get a feeling for what he's like. His little character. So you're gonna be spending some time with him. <laughs> So I'm literally just pushing this pastel. I'm just trying not to do a line. Occasionally you do a little bit of a line, but um, trying not to do a line, just pushing that pastel into the paper. It's just to give you a map, as I say, don't don't go putting loads that you, you think it's going to help you doing an outline with loads and loads of details and this line and that line, but it doesn't. It ends up hampering you. You end up um, not knowing what certain line is for and um, getting yourself into a right pickle. So just a very basic outline is best. Obviously, you know, if you're doing a pet portrait, it's slightly different. You know, you would want to spend a little bit more time on the outline around the eyes just to make sure that everything's absolutely just so because um, you only need to be a, a less than a millimetre out and it looks like a different dog. But certainly for your wildlife art, you can um, have a very basic outline. That's absolutely fine. Okay, so hopefully it should have all come through. Yeah, so you look at that, you can just about see it. Just about see an outline. Let's just double check that we've got everything. I might just press. I don't think I'd put any pastel on there. To be honest, I think that's absolutely fine. All I'm going to do is um, take that away now. Pop that back on. on there. I'm just going to secure it into position. Okay, so I think what I'm just going to do, um, just because the more my hand moves around the page, the more likelihood it is that this is going to get smudged. So I'm just going over those lines that I've created just to make sure that I don't lose them. You can always, if you wonder where that was, it was kind of in there, wasn't it? So yeah, you've got a few just in there. I'm not so worried about the, the middle section because we're going to be working on that fairly quickly. But that's fine. So that's enough of an outline in the white. Uh, let's have a look. I might just, I just, <laughs> having just said I don't need it, I'm just going to go over that again. And then that's his grumpy little eye bit. <laughs> Makes him look quite cross already, doesn't it? Okay, so there we have it. We have um, Ollie. Oliver, um, and um, he's all ready to start drawing. First thing that I do with any um, painting, drawing, whatever it is that I'm doing, is I will always start with the eye. Um, it's the most engaging thing, and to be honest, I just like them looking at me. <laughs> 
Um, I want to kind of see them take shape. And I feel like if they look at me, um, they're truly sort of alive. And um, then it helps me with the rest. It's almost like they help me with the rest of it, which is a bit bonkers, I know, but that's me. Okay, so the first thing I will do, we've only got a very small amount of space to work with here. Um, I'm going to use my 199 by Faber-Castell and I'm just going to find out where everything is basically. So this little corner um, comes in here. I obviously haven't done that on the outline. I'm just going to make sure of everything really. Just uh, This was obviously the line that we picked out which is kind of like the inside of the eye um, and then that was sort of like the outer sort of grey a bit so this bit here is quite dark and then that's the sort of the, like the little grumpy bit that was kind of coming up up here and also sort of comes down here a little bit as well so this is not really doing any more than just sort of sketching freehanding. I'm just working out where everything is so that I can I can plot it in. And then this bit is all fur here. Okay, so that's that. Now I can see just about on the reference photograph that the little pupil is in here. So that's just plotting that in. And then um, what I will do, so that was the 199, which is the black. So I'm basically getting my black and my white. And I'm just going to plot in the reflection. We're going to be making it, some, you know, sort of a nicer colour in a bit. But just for now, I'm just, again, just plotting, plotting the information in. So that's the reflection there. And the pupil kind of goes, probably kind of goes over that as well. That's better. Okay. So we've got that in there. Um, again, while I've got the black, I think this section in here is a little bit darker. That top, that top left, and it kind of comes around here. And then, and I do quite kind of quite like the angle there because that is going to make him look a bit grumpy, um, which is what we want. We want a bit of character. Okay, that's that there. Now then, we've got a little. Um, little bit of light just here which is where the the light is hitting it up to there and then we've got sort of like um that's all a mixture so I'm using a mixture of black and white there again that is just plotting that is just working out um, right there's a this goes here and that goes there sort of feeling and once you've got that in place, you'll feel more confident at, um, at proceeding. So we've got a little bit that sits in front of the corner of the eye here. I'm just going to shade that in a bit as well. Okay, so that's your basic eye. So we've got the pupil, we've got the reflection, we've got the dark bits at the top, dark bits at the bottom. Everything's kind of in the right place. So I'm quite happy with that. The next thing I'm going to do is look for some vibrancy. Now, whenever I start an eye, and I'm sure people think I'm a bit crazy, um, starting with such a sort of a vivid colour for an eye that's actually, um, you know, from a distance just looks black. Um, in this instance, I think I'm going to use the Faber-Castell Burnt Sienna, which is number 283. And um, I'm just going to give it a very, very light coating, just colouring in basically, giving that a little bit um, of feel. Um, so that was the 283 and then I've got another colour here which is the 192 which is just sort of a little bit more ready it's not in the reference but I'm just going to add I do love putting a little bit of red in an eye so I'm just dotting in a couple of little bits like that before it gets before we, before we darken it and um, kind of make it the colours that we want to I just like to get a little a little something a little bit extra in I'm going to go back in with my black and just dot that in there so the corner of the eye is quite dark and um, we've got sort of like a couple of little sort of darker bits here we do have to bear in mind it's a very small eye I mean I'm only working off of an A4 um, it's very very small so you're not going to be able to get too much in so don't worry too much 
but let's just get the sort of the, the main focus in. I'm just going to go over that pupil again a little bit more. And can you see how very, very quickly we've got something that looks like an eye? So the next thing that I'll do, now normally on a base layer, I do use a little paper stemmed um, cotton bud. Um, but on somewhere that's as important as the eye and on such a small area, I'm actually going to use a paper stump because there's just a little bit more control and it doesn't push the pigment around quite as much as a cotton, um, as a paper stump does. So yeah, you can see I'm just pressing it into the surface and then it's on the top of my um, stump there so I'm going to wipe that off but I'm actually also going to turn it upside down and just this little reflection I know it's going to dull it right down I'm okay with that because we're going to do some interesting things with that in a minute so it's going to look really really dull and then I'm just going to press in the rest of that sort of darkness there. So I've dulled it right back. It's lost quite a bit of the vibrancy that it had, but it's enabling us to get layers on top. Otherwise it just sits on the surface and sort of bobbles along the surface. Okay, so I'm happy with that. Now, the first thing I will do, I think, is have a look at this reflection. So while I've got the white in my hands, I'm going to look at this eye and think to myself, where is, I mean, it's quite a dull day, but where is the, the, where is the lightest point in that reflection? Now, to me, this bit here is the absolute lightest. So that's where I'm going to put my white. And also here as well, we've got a little bit, just a bit dotted there. So that's in there. Now it's not in the um, reference photo, but um, I'm just going to look at my pencils that I've got. So I've got a nice blue here from, um, again, Faber-Castell. I'm gonna just use all of those um, for this video. And I literally just want to dot a couple of little bits of blue in. Just to make it more interesting, you don't want just a flat reflection, it can look ever so boring. So tiny little bit of blue in there, as if the sky is um, is, is shining, um, you know, the light's shining and you're seeing, you're seeing the, um, the sky reflected in his eyes. So that was that tiny bit of blue. I'm also going to use da -da -da -da, a purple, which is the 160 by Faber-Castell, and I'm just gonna put a couple of tiny little dots. So basically with an eye, when you come from darkness into the light, I like to use a transitional vibrancy color. And a little bit of purple, um, we'll probably get some Payne's gray um, at some stage in there as well. Look, which I think is, no, that's the 175. Um, yeah, 181, that's the, that's the Payne's Gray, I'm pretty sure. So I might just kind of get rid of a little bit of that purple uh, with the 181. They're only tiny little sort of minimal um, marks that I'm making. It's just dulled it down, but you can see a tiny bit of purple still in there. And because it's all got a little bit lost, I'm just going to find my line again, find my line of the inside of the eye. There. And we want definitely want to keep that little grumpy look. So let's let's give him even more grumpy by doing that little corner there. And then you might want to sort of you can do a couple of little dashes over the eye, which make it look like an eyelash. Um, don't go too mad because obviously it's such a small area. You don't want to sort of obliterate it again. Um, and then that's. So I'm just constantly looking at it and thinking, right, okay, what do we need to add to it? Okay, so that lovely vibrant colour that we've got in the middle, we do need to dull it down a bit because it's not that colour. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the 177, which is a lovely brown colour by the Faber-Castell. And we're going to just give it a little base layer over the red there. Okay. 
Then we're gonna go back to our Payne's Gray that we had. We had this, so the 181. And then this is very blue. So Payne's Gray is basically a really dark blue. So I'm popping that in there because that's what we really want to sort of show around here. A lovely little bit of blue that's just, you know, it's a really dark sort of blue, but just around there. So that's a layer of Payne's Gray, which I say is the 181. And then I'm gonna just bring it back, bring the, the little highlights back here. I've got a very sharp pencil. in there and in there and I'm just taking my time if I go a bit quiet I'm thinking so I want to get this nice and bright and then that bright again as well Okay, so it's starting to take shape, it's looking good, but I just want a bit more information in that eye. The reference photo that I've got is a bit boring, let's face it. Um, so just like I did with the reflection where I'm looking for what's the brightest highlight, what's the sort of the mid-range highlight, and what's the sort of a, um, you know, sort of the next one down from that. Same, I'm sort of thinking the same again with the eye, so I'm just gonna use my black now, just create a little bit of, shading there a little bit of this line that's under there just a bit of shading there and this section under here i'm going to add some nice um some nice yellows too i think as very often you get a good hint of yellow just a couple and i will add a little bit of white to it as well Okay. So just got a little bit of a reflection. It's not as bright as the actual highlight, but it's just giving it a bit of a lift. Okay. And then I might go back in with my red, which was my one, it was a really deep red. It's the 192 from Faber-Castell. And where I used the black, because black can be quite a flat color. I do use it a lot in pastels actually, but mainly to create depth in conjunction with other colors. I'm just going to add that little bit of red um, to either side as well. We're just going for just getting some interest, getting some, um, you know, differences in colours, differences in sort of textures and the difference between the reflection and the um, uh, the secondary reflection as it as the eye comes down. There's not an awful lot of room to play with. You know, it's not... Um, it's not going to be very, very easy to do much more than that. But I think that just hopefully shows you how we can get um, some difference in a very, very small area. And to me, that looks like a cute little eye. At some stage, and certainly as lots of pastel flies around, but by the time we're doing sort of more of him, um, there's a strong chance that we're going to um, need to kind of re you know go over the... Um, um, over the eye again and, and you know perhaps do some sort of little tweaks and changes. I might just um, make that do I want a little bit more reflection there or does that change the expression? Let's just see um, I might just so that was the white I used this is the 181 and I'm just going to have it there but just knock it back a little bit with the um, 181. Now I think that the pupil needs bringing up a bit so I'm just gonna do that. Okay that makes him look very grumpy. <laughs> I do quite like it though. Okay I think we're going to leave it at that for the moment and then um, as I get to know him a little bit more she has famous last words and then she goes straight in I just want a bit more yellow there just to give a little bit of difference there we go I think that's fine for now um, it's possibly a little bit too colored but as I say by the time um, we start 
um, you know, putting lots of fur in and, and lots of things. There'll be lots of pastel um, that will come down. It will just damp down that colour a little bit because it's beautiful, but it's just a little bit too vibrant at the moment and it's um, not quite as realistic as it could be. So, um, but we'll leave that for now and we'll get on with um, some of the other parts of him and come back to that eye in a second. So here, we're gonna start on the right eye now. And the first thing I'm going to do is to pop the pupil in. And now that little circle that we've made there is actually the reflection, it's not the pupil, so that could be confusing. But the pupil kind of comes here, it's sort of there, isn't it? And then this is the outside bit. So I'm just using the black to reassess exactly where everything is. So I think that this is just the basic shape of the inside of the eye. And again, I'm going to use the white that um, I was using before and just work out, there's a little, tiny little bit of um, white just outside the eye there where, it's sitting, where some liquid is sitting on the surface. So that's there. And then, um, the 181 that we were using a minute ago, which is the Payne's Grey, I'm just going to put a layer of that in here because it kind of comes all the way up here. And then I'm going to pop some white back in with that. And then go back over it again with the Payne's Grey. So just alternating between the white and the Payne's Grey, just to sort of create that sort of lovely, sort of bluey, um, bottom of the um, eyelid before we go into the fur. Um, I'm going to do the same again because we've got the same again sort of up here and again this helps add to the expression. The, the um, area around the eye of an animal is incredibly important to, to get right so do take your time on it because it is what makes expression. And very often you think, oh, there's something wrong in that eye. What, what is it? What is it? What is it? And actually it's not in the eye. It's actually um, some of the marks that are made around the outside of it. So I'm going back in with my 199 because just in this section here, I can see a really nice deep um, sort of black bit just in there. And I just want to pop that in to intensify that bit there. And then we've got a little bit, so I just want to make sure that I know where that, that line is there. But we've got sort of an area here of shade. So I'm just gonna very lightly touch with the um, with the black there, just so that I know, again, know where everything is. And then um, that little circle that we created, we know that that's the, re the reflection, or the, the strongest part of the reflection. And then I'm just going to lightly get the other part of the, of the reflection in. But still so that I can see that little bubble, because that's the, the sort of the, the highest and most important part of it. I'm just going to come over the pupil as well. Um, it's quite important to not have a pupil and then a reflection. You want to show that the pupil is sitting underneath the reflection. Um, and, you know, that, that might mean that you kind of need to do a couple of little bits like that, but the, the top half of this pupil needs to be very slightly lighter so that it looks like the reflection is sitting over the top of it. Um, okay, he's got quite a... Um, let's have a look. I might just bring the, the pupil up that way a little bit. Keep tweaking. Um, And then that's, that's the reflection coming over there. Okay. Now I'm going to use, um, just this top half, I'm just gonna, there's a tiny, it's almost like a stripe, like a brown stripe just in there. I'm gonna pop that in. And then there's a little bit of light just the other side of it. It's just so that I make sure that everything's in, in, in the right place. 
Then I'm gonna do exactly what we did with the left hand side eye and pop that really nice vibrant um, burnt sienna in. So just giving it a little layer here. And then going over the top of that darker um, mark that I made and I'm gonna pop it up here as well. And in here, just to give it that um, bit of colouring. That's, that's better, it's starting to look nice now. And then I'm going to just dot this into place with my paper stump. And as I say, it will, just like before, it will dull it and it will make it look not as nice as, as you thought it was. And then we add another layer on. So many times I see people do a certain amount and they're frightened to do any more. And actually it's the layers that get um, get the realism. Okay, so I'm gonna go, so obviously everything is now really flat and, and slightly milky looking where I've kind of pushed it all together. I'm just going to find this um, this line in here. And then in there, basically going over what we had before. It's kind of looking that way, so I can pop the pupil that way. Um, might be a bit big, that pupil, but we'll see. We'll have a play around with it in a minute. Again, I'm just going over everything that I've just done before, and I'm just intensifying it at the moment. Tiny little dots around there, little bits in there, and then I'm just going to flick a couple of hairs over. Um, that is really lovely when you do that because you kind of makes it look like the eye is sitting behind everything, and then that's the like the normal fur as we come out there. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is just add a. Um, Tiny little bit of a lighter colour just to give it a bit of interest just here you can see when you look at the reference photo you can see how this section is the one that's going to show the most colour sort of up to here so just popping a little bit of yellow in and then um, the red that we also used um, on the left hand side we're now going to pop a little bit just in here this is the 192 I might use it as the, you can add lib a bit as well, whatever you think looks good. And then I'm going to go back over that little circle, get that really nice and bright, because that's the main reflection there. And I'm just going to pop a tiny little dot in on the, because the reflection down at the bottom of the eye there, um, that's the lightest apart from this. This is the, the, the lightest highlight, but it's going to have a parallel um, light, just the other side of it, um, secondary reflection here. And I quite like putting a little dot in there. Just give it a bit of, bit of interest. If it's too much, we can always um, change it. I'm just going to intensify these as well, because they, these are some really nice little highlights where the sun's hitting the base of the eye there as well. And actually you've got a little reflection just in there. And that kind of comes off there. So let's get our blue again and now add some blue. So um, I think there's probably a little bit of blue just to the right hand side of that there. Um, you can try it all over. And then um, well, let's get that bit of purple that we use. And I'm gonna use the purple this time just at the very top there. Right, I think the pupil has come down too far, so what I'm gonna do, I'm just going to make the pupil a little bit smaller. And it kind of comes. Always be willing to, to change a little bit. So it's sort of there, isn't it? <laughs> Looks a bit, it does look a bit shocked with life at the moment. <laughs> I 
we'll um, just bring that reflection over it like that, just tone it down a bit and I think that's fine um, yeah I think so let's have a look, just maybe nudge it a little bit like that okay we will see let's get to know him a bit more we can always change it we can always um add some piece bits and pieces as we want to i might just there's a tiny bit just in that top left hand corner that i'm going to use this Payne's gray that we were using before i just want to dull that down a little bit tiny little things make such a difference let's knock that purple back a bit We're dealing with such a small space as well, though it is difficult. I'm going to use my um, 199, which is my black. And just create a bit more depth, just in there. Because that might be um, be what's making it f not feel quite right. I'm just going to go over this circle again before we lose it. It's gradually got smaller and smaller. Okay. So that to me, I think, is, is fine at the moment. The eyes have gone a bit green, actually. It's just every time I say it's fine and then um, go back over it with something else. I'm always constantly tweaking. I'm just going to go back over the yellows that I've created with the burnt sienna. And I'm going to do that on both sides because it's just looking a bit greeny. And actually, the bottom section of this and it does come around there to be fair I think that's fine for now I think what we need to do is get the rest of the um, little also get the rest of Ollie in and um, then we'll have a look at it I quite like the um, highlight that's coming over here it sort of adds to that sort of grumpy slightly startled grumpy look Let's have a look at the reflection here as well. It might be that we need to beef that up a bit as well. Um, let's have a look. <laughs> He's making me laugh already, which is a good sign. Um, okay, so that's around the... A great thing when you're doing reflections is just curve some of your lines because again obviously the um, the eye is spherical so you want it to look like it's um, it, it's coming over over a surface I think what else can we add in there I think maybe we just go a bit darker at the top of the eye actually let's just go in with our black and then just create that little line in there just so it sits in a bit deeper and then also here as well I've got that little black pit there that's better it looks like it's really sort of sitting inside now um, I might knock it back with the 177 so the 177 is a really nice brown might just pop a little bit under just underneath the bottom of the eye there So we're sort of doing a few things that aren't really in the reference photo, but you know, it is a sort of a just, it's better than doing a, a big black blob, isn't it, at the end of the day. We want to show a few different colours. So that was the 177. I'm just going to pop a tiny little bit of red in there, which is the 192. I really have got to the maximum capacity on the pastel mat now though. So um, we'll see, we'll see how that goes. The, um, there's a little darker line there, his, his eyelash or something. I've lost a little bit. Maybe I'm just, if I just tuck that under there a bit more. That's a bit, okay. I think that's um, good enough for now. Apart from just adding a little secondary reflection, just there. Give a little hint. Okay. Right. So the next thing that we're going to be doing is um, a little portion of hair. Now, I've not quite decided how wet I want him to look 
whether I go for that sort of really wet look or whether I, <laughs> I fluff him up as if he's been in the dry for a bit. Um, I'm not sure. So I think what I'm going to do is take a two minute break and think about it. Okay, so I've had a little think about it. Um, and while I do want him to look a little bit more like he's had a blow dry, um, I also think that a lot of otters obviously are near water. So we're gonna make him a little bit wetter. Um, I'm just going to film my way into it, to be honest. Um, I'm gonna start with the 177 which is a nice sort of deep brown and I'm literally just going to fill my way into this fur. So I'm looking very, very closely at my reference photo. I'm going to make my reference photo roughly the same size as what I can see on screen. So I'm zooming into my photo now. And I'm just going to look at the direction first and foremost without even thinking about what's wet, what's dry. I'm going to look at the direction of the fur. So we've got some fur that kind of comes to here and this is where the dark fur ends, is about there. So I'm just going to, looking at the general direction, can you see how it's curving? Like that, and then obviously as you come around here, it's going to, curve like this and this kind of comes around and actually that little sort of bit of fur that comes that way does help add to the grumpy look um, and because this is a base layer you know we're going to be scrubbing it in in a minute so I'm not too worried but I just want to get a feel for it feel for the direction of the fur length of the fur is roughly like this And then when we get to around about here, it starts, this is the sort of center of the forehead. That's quite a useful little mark to make. And don't forget this is your little otter. It's um, your little Ollie. You know, it doesn't have to be exactly like the photograph as long as it looks like an otter. <laughs> You know, you can allow yourself to have a bit of creative freedom. So it, it's quite distinct the way um, that the fur moves here. It kind of comes up there and it comes around there and then it goes up there. Always have a look at um, the direction of the fur. That's the most important thing out of all of it. And I just want to cut off where the, up to where the ear goes about there, doesn't it? Okay, so that's a nice little base layer. You know, if you were working with soft pastels or pan pastels or anything like that, you could create that layer um, without using the pencils. When I'm um, working on a small scale like this though, I do actually like the control that the pastel pencils give me. Um, so I'm quite happy um, to use pencils all the way through for that. And then this bit is where the darker bit comes in. Okay, so that starts to make a little bit more sense there. So we've got a base layer, we know the direction of the fur, um, and we're just getting a bit of a feel for Ollie. So um, the first thing that I do um, as I'm getting a base layer in is push it just a little bit further into the pastel mat. I mean, we're lucky in the sense that actually the, the pastel mat, this brown pastel mat is a very, very similar color. So we're not gonna have to work too hard to, to get that mid-tone right. If we were using the dark gray one, we might be having to sort of work a little bit more on this. Either would be fine, but um, you can already, it's already acting as a bit of a base layer in itself. So all I'm doing here is nothing more interesting than just pushing it into the surface blending it in so it's not sitting on top of the surface it's actually merged into the into into the surface as a base layer then 
push that in, keep stroking it. Remember what it is that you're drawing as well. Very often when I'm drawing, I think about, you know, if I was literally stroking the animal, you know, how, how it would feel and, and where the head would dip and that sometimes helps things as well. Okay, so that's a nice little base layer. Quite happy with that. So I'm now going to go back in again with the 177. So I'm just keeping in with that at the moment. And I'm just going to create a, a few more little areas that are darker. So there are certain sections in the fur that you can see are slightly darker than others. And that's where the head sort of dips. So you've got a little dark section there, a little dark section just to the outside of the eye there. And then there's a bit of a section that sort of dips a bit here. So I'm going to just work on that a bit. Just adding a bit of structure. I'm now going to get um, my um, Payne's Grey, which is the 181, I believe. And um, it's actually quite blunt, which is good. I'm going to, I'm, I'm happy with that. Um, I'm all for having nice, sharp, shiny um, pencils, but at the end of the day, um, Blunt ones will serve a better purpose um, this early on in your layers. So I'm really just kind of looking for a few areas where there are a few bits of grey, because it's not just a brown otter, you know, you've got browns and greys and blues and using lots of different colours will be what helps give it um, a little bit of flavour and a little bit of interest and make it look more realistic. And I'm still constantly looking for the direction of that fur. And we've got quite a bit of, I've sort of obliterated one of the highlights there, so I might have to come back over that and go over it. So I'm just going over again. We've got lots of nice sort of gray, gray color just in here. In the corner. And we've got quite a bit in there as well. Oh, I'm liking him already. Cute grumpy. And the biggest tip that I can give anyone with fur is just concentrate on the direction of your fur. So many times I see people and it's not if it's if it's slightly out, it you know, it, it just ruins the whole look at whole look of the picture. Really concentrate on that above everything else. And it's not quite, I've not done it quite as clumpy as um, as in the photo, as I say. I want it to look like he's a little bit drier. Like the sun's suddenly come out and um, while he's been out of the water and has quickly given him a, as I say, a blow dry. So, um, so that was the 181. So all I've literally done with the fur so far is use the 177, which is a nice um, brown. Um, I think it's the walnut brown. And then I've used the uh, 181, um, which is the gray, it's the bluey gray. I'm pretty sure it's the uh, Payne's gray. Um, just really concentrating on the direction of the fur and plotting that in. The next thing I'm gonna do is go back in and start to sort of press some of this um, grey that we've put in to start to sort of create a bit more of a base layer. So I would call this a texturising base layer now. You know, it's got a bit of texture but it's going to be nice and smooth so we can get the little hairs that go in on top. So I'm looking around that whole section and 
and I, everything sort of looks smooth. There's nothing sort of bobbling on the surface. It's all been well and truly sort of int integrated. Let's pop that in as well, a little bit there. Okay, great. So the next thing I'm going to do is start to create some little hairs on top. Now, um, I'm going to work up my colours. I'm going to just see what this looks like. It's the 233. It might be a bit too dark. Yeah, that's not really going to show up very much. I'll just do a few, a few little strokes. I do quite like having lots of different colours in a section. So this is the 233. It's quite a dark grey. But just to sort of add a few on there, but it doesn't show up awfully. Um, still helps though, everything helps. The next one I'm going to try is the 270, which is... Okay, so this is the 270, this is quite a nice light grey. Now in contrast to the base layers, I'm going to, you know, where I was quite happy to have a uh, fairly blunt pencil. Now I'm going to sharpen it and it should come up quite light so you can really see it. So I'm not obliterating all those nice sort of darks that I've made. I'm sort of looking for some of the sections where um, that aren't so dark, sort of like the mid sections, some of the, just to create my lights. Um, still mindful of the reference photo and the direction of the fur. around here. I must learn to draw without my hand in the way. <laughs> so many things to think of when you're filming. And then let's go. You know, I don't know why I'm whispering. I think as I get more and more delicate, I then start to whisper a bit. <laughs> If you want it slightly lighter in areas, like I wouldn't mind a little bit of a highlight there. Look for the area where the highlight is on the eye and the little bit above the eye, that size, so you've got a little sort of concave bit there. You can look and do a couple of little light bits there because obviously that's where the light is going to be hitting it. And then it kind of comes around in here. And then obviously we've got the outline which um, which we had down there. I'm now going to sort of fluff fluff that out over the top so that we haven't got any unusual bits. Make them a bit fluffy. Be careful not to go too mad with this and then end up ruining all the nice dark hairs that you had before. So um, what I'm tempted to do now it's just get a little bit of structure back. Um, so I might go in with the black again, the 199, and just pop a couple, just to add a few little dark bits of interest. And then we've got some dark bits that come here, around here, and a few little dark bits there. 
obviously this section here just where the ear um, is is going to be is going to be nice and dark where the fur sort of hits the hits the ear and this is going to be super dark um, just a couple of I'm going in between some of the hairs now just to create a bit of difference again in some of the sections where you've already got darks is quite nice and we've got a lovely beautiful dark bit just in there which is really nice and actually really quite dark in that bit and there that's nice and then add a few in there And we're not using black on its own, we're using it more as a sort of like a dark grey and it's mixing in with some of the colours that are already there and just sort of intensifying those colours. Yep, I'm liking that. So the next thing that I would do, because we've um, now got quite a few, well, not loads of layers on there, but we've got um, a few layers on there, I'm going to be um, using my paper stump as opposed to my um, um, cotton bud, just because it will keep everything in place. It won't sm it won't smudge it around too much. But I just want to sort of press some of that in. I'm not I'm not looking now to sort of scrub it into the valleys of the pastel mat. I'm just looking to sort of make sure that it's properly in there pushing it in but not too deep a little bit more pushing in there because that was we hadn't done anything on that layer and then in there okay liking that Yep, that's good. Okay, right, so I think that is a section of fur done. Let's do, um, let's do exactly what we did, um, but we'll do it the other side while it's fresh in our minds. So we went in with the 177, which was the um, dark brown, and we first of all just wanted to find out the direction of the fur. So this side slightly less directional, kind of comes that way. And again, I don't mind that it's not super sharp, my, my pencil. I could turn it over and it would be more sharp. That sort of comes there. Leave some little gaps, because you'll be using those in a minute. My head is constantly turning towards my reference. And got a little sort of section just here, outside the eye. And then, and then that sort of comes around here before it starts to go light again. And we'll pop a bit of that in as well. Okay, so now I'm going to um, use the 181, which is the... Um, Payne's grey and I'm just going to use it in some of the sections so you're going for a sort of a two-toned approach with the grey and with the brown down to this little nosy bit there 
we've got quite an interesting little grey bit that sort of comes down here as well. Okay, and then at that stage we used this cotton bud to just really push it all into the surface. Always feels a little bit depressing once you've sort of pushed it in because you had a sort of like a really nice colour and then it all goes a bit milky and horrible but it is a necessary evil I'm afraid. So I'm going back in with the 177 again trying to be mindful not only of the reference photo but also of the sort of style of hairs that you've got the other side because they do need to match and they, they sort of curve Curve a little bit there, and then in there, okay. So this time I think um, we're going to pop a couple, we did, did this quite dark blue, which is the 233. I'm just going to do a couple of those, perhaps in the middle got a lot more light this side so I'm going to concentrate the slightly lighter grey on that side. I tend to rush when I'm filming as well but in reality I just need to take a minute every now and again and just assess it and um, feel free to fast me forward if I'm not going fast enough. <laughs> Let's pop this here. The magic happens when you take your time and you really focus on things. Do a couple of little lighter bits there. So go for the areas that you can see that aren't the darkest. And I very often sort of cross hairs over hairs that sit underneath it. That adds a little bit of realism as well. Not having them all pointing in the same direction. Um, what have I got there? Let's have a look. Uh, that's quite nice. We've got a very light section just here, so I'm just going to plot that in. Gives a section, and then we've got the same again this side. Okay. Oh, he's looking quite cute already. Okay. Not worried about whiskers yet. I'm going to do whiskers at the end. You need to take a big deep breath to do whiskers. <laughs> so I'm not following the reference completely. Obviously the reference shows that hairs really clumped together because they're wet. I'm fluffing them out a little bit. Just because he's my otter and that's what I want to do. No other reason than that. Gonna fluff out a few little hairs at the top. And a couple of little bits in there. Okay. Got a little bit more light in this section here. 
then I think we're going to use the um, 181 a little bit just to bring a couple of little depthy bits in. just before we get to the ear okay so I think they're fairly sort of level um, I think the, the last thing that I did on the left hand side which I haven't quite done I've done with the 181 but just come in with my black and just let's get a couple of little darker areas the, the, the bits the crevices the bits that are that sit underneath all the hairs You have got quite a little dark bit in there. Um, and then it, they kind of come like that a little bit. Actually, that top bit there is a bit more of a dip either side. I'm just going to use the grey there for as if the light's hitting it a bit. Okay, I'm going to use now um, my pusher inner rather than scrub it around. This is my stump and I'm just going to blend without over blending. thing I'm going to do I think is get my white actually and just add a few little peak highlights look for the areas where the lights just going to be hitting a couple of little strands so we know it hits the top of the ear hits a few there and of course it's difficult because we've gone for sort of slightly less wet approach but I think you would see some here. So this is just pure white now. This is just the 101 from Faber-Castell. You'd see a couple of little bits there. Quite like that looking a little bit skewed. Let's have a look. A couple of lighter bits in there. a section that's underneath. I just want to work out exactly where the fur starts and the little under bit ends. So that's that there. That wish you little Payne's grey. And I might go in with that dark grey which is the 233 just to add a little bit there. I'm going to see how that looks in time. I think um, not sure, jury's out on it at the moment, but we will see. So this is part of his eye is a little bit more, um, is a little bit lighter than this side. At the moment, the tone that I've got going on there and the tone that I've got going on there are the same and they shouldn't be. Um, because as it goes off into the distance, it should be darker because it's spherical. So I'm gonna use my 177 to just sort of brown it out so you've got the light there, but we're just going to give it a bit of brown, and that's looking better. Um, <coughs> I'm 
This eye just feels a little, just a touch too big. So this is the 199 again. I'm just going to pop some black in just to cement it back in where I think it should be. I've got a couple of little black bits around there. Okay. And then I'm gonna scrub in a little, you know, push quite hard to get that pupil in. And go back over the highlight. Okay, I'm gonna go just put a little bit more highlight in just in this left eye. And see how I like that. So I think there's a little dot just there. Maybe do that, make that up a bit. And then there's a hair in there. Okay. I might, if in doubt, add a little bit of vibrancy. It's gone a little bit milky there. I just want it to stand out a bit more. So I'm going to get rid of that line that we had there and I'm just going to introduce some red. And this is my decision, it's not in the reference photo. Looking less grumpy now. Something I did there made him look less grumpy. I don't know what it is. I see a little bit of grumps to back. Okay. So I think he's got quite a starey eye there, and I'm not sure that I like that completely. So I'm just going to give a little bit of depth to the top part of the eye, just to bring that down a bit. Could go on forever with this sort of thing. But that's what I do. And I'm not gonna rush, because I want you to see exactly how, how I draw my technique. And if that's going over and over and over it, then so be it. Right. I might put some of that back again, having just, I'm gonna use the two, three, three, and just create that reflection back again, because I did actually need it after all. So you can hardly see it. Constantly a process of tweaking a tiny bit, you know, judging it. Um, it's all really important. Now there's actually a nice little highlight just there, just above that eye there, which actually also adds to the grumpy look. And some of these little hairs just in here. Now actually, there's a little upward flick just outside here, which I think is really nice, which might help with the general look as well. If you find you can't go black enough, you can always use, um, I mean, I'm just using Faber-Castell today, um, but you could use a soft pastel in areas if you've gone a bit milky and you really can't get the, um, the darkness back. Um, you can use a soft pastel, which is um, nice, sort of really deep black. Generally, they are anyway. I mean, I use Schminky um, and Sennelia. I think that's how you say them. Um, or the Creta colour. Um, I also like the Creta colour. Um, the black chalk. But I'll use that in, a, in another tutorial, another t another stage to introduce you to it. So I'm just popping a couple of little highlights just in there. 
because that's where I can see that the, the light is hitting it. So even though it's not showing it because the otter's wet, I'm putting it in there because I can see that that's where there's a little bit of light, even down here actually. So I'm just using the white at the moment. Okay, right, so that's the top of his head done for now. Doesn't mean we're going to um, completely um, forget about it. We probably will come back to it. I always say something's done and then I see something else and I go back to it. Um, there'll still be quite um, a few bits to do. The only thing I might just do while I've got the black in my hand is just create a bit of depth here. So it helps you see the structure of the head. Because that's really important with everything. So actually that bit there, there's a nice little dark at the top of the nose. So, Okay, that's enough for now. I think um, I'm going to take a little break and we will move on to the next bits in a while. Okay, so... Um, Whenever I take a little bit of time out um, from a drawing, it's really quite useful sort of coming back, you know, stepping back from it and having a look. Um, and I can see that this is a little bit too light. So I'm just gonna do a glazing technique on it. I'm using the 280 by Faber-Castell, and it's just, um, I think it's the raw umber. But it's just knocking back these highlights a little bit so they're not quite so stark. And just, you know, we might put them back in again, but just giving it very slight sort of warm glow and just sort of knocking it back. Put some tiny little bits in areas where we need it as well. Very gently when you're glazing. Glazing is probably best sort of done on the side, you know, holding it like um, like that and using it um, to the side. Okay, so I think now we should be ready to start the side of the face. I'm going to, um, going to actually, while I've got this in my hand, because it's quite a nice brownie colour anyway, this um, uh, 280, I'm going to start by using it on its side and just creating a bit of a base layer, just, to, just through the middle here. Um, so this is the bit that is before you get to the face. So just through here, just creating a little bit of shading. And then I'm going to Again on the side, I think I'm just going to, this is a lot lighter, this section of the cheek, but even so, we still want to have um, some nice sort of depth sitting underneath everything else. <clears throat> so I'm just going to pop that there. Um, and really look at the colours that are sitting underneath there. I think it's more of... Um, of a grey that sort of sits at the base layer of under here. So the Payne's Grey, which is the 181. Um, how am I going to do this? Yeah, just using it on its side. And I'm still looking at the direction of the fur, even though I'm not doing furry strokes. I'm not, I'm not kind of going up like that and doing um, furry bits. I'm just glazing on the side. Just to create a base layer, really. I mean, you could create the base layer with soft pastels, as I said earlier. But I'm just I'm actually using my left hand now, which is why it'll probably go all over the place. Just sort of creating, we're trying to create the colour that sits underneath those hairs. And um, that's all quite dark. And then I want to do this bit separately because this is the this is the sort of the the head, if you like, and this is the the face, the sort of the muzzle around here. And I want to make them. So a little bit distinct. Okay, so now that we've got that in, I'm going to create that sort of 
base layer by using the cotton, cotton buds. And much more quickly, I'm going to start working with my greys because obviously um, up the top here, we did quite a lot of layers in with the darks before we started putting just a few few lights on top. Whereas this area um, is a white section of his fur or, you know, sort of lighter section of his fur. So we're gonna hit the greys a bit sooner. So I'm gonna work up, this is the 233, which was the, it's still quite a dark gray, so you're not really gonna, gonna see it. I'm just gonna add a couple, a couple in there just to add a bit of a gray, a hazy bit. And then I'm going to use um, the 270, which is, um, going to be the right sort of shade for here until we, until we get the very very white whites. So these are really quite nice light bits here but I'm still using the, the 270 and notice the way that I've naturally changed my strokes from going like that from doing small little strokes to doing longer ones here because this is to the outside edge of the um, of there and I'm just going to so bring some of these. It is difficult to see what this fur would look like if it wasn't wet. I made things hard for myself really, haven't I? And you can just follow it exactly, but um, just creating a you know a couple of you know looking at looking at the direction. They all go in slightly different directions here. You've got some that go down, some that go across. So just try and mimic that. And then I'm just going to put a few in here. I can see a few lights that we've not dealt with. Okay. And then this section here is really quite light. So I'm just going straight in. I mean, this is just be a base layer, but just so that I don't lose track of the different sort of sections of the face. There's, I'm still using this 270. Okay, so that's... There's another colour I want to bring in, if I can find it. Yeah. <laughs> There's only a tiny one that I've got left. Um, it's the 103 which is a nice creamy colour from the Faber-Castell range. I think we need a bit of cream. We're kind of going, um, we're using quite a lot of grey, quite a lot of sort of browns. I think we just need a few little creamy bits. So we'll do that there. That's some nice little cream. Cream's going on there. Let's just add, so I've sharpened it. So whereas the base layers were really quite sort of rough and random, I'm now starting to just put a few little creams in with a, a slightly sharper, sharper look. I don't mind putting a few in here as well, actually, because it's not all just going to be either white or brown or black. Let's, let's add some different colours in. of little that's there and that's this is what it's all about is you know um, you do a section doesn't mean you just sort of move on and like that's it that's that's it done you see little things as you go on and keep an eye out for things and while you have a certain pencil in your hand as well sometimes it can prompt you to think oh that, yeah we need a bit of that in this area This is just to add a bit of warmth into this side section, but it is quite white, so I'm not going to go too mad. 
Okay, so now I'm going to go in with my white and it's fairly sharp. Let's have a look at how it's doing. So um, when, I'm, when I'm doing some slightly sharper um, little marks, I do tend to sort of like be a little bit more, you know, go a bit slower for a start and do them a little bit more determinedly. I sort of hold them on the end. I'm not kind of crunching down to the paper. I'm sort of still holding it um, like this, but I am sort of, I'm pushing, I'm kind of pushing a little bit hard, using a little bit of pressure just to get that, get those marks. And twiddling the um, pastel pencil as I go. few little ones here that kind of come up and over. Don't forget them, don't forget the, the little ones that kind of look like they're really at quite an odd angle where the way they come down here and then other ones come across, they kind of come up and over because that's sort of a bit of structure just there as well. The other colour that I think actually might look quite nice, believe it or not, it's a bit of pink, because underneath here, obviously there is skin. I can definitely see some pinks in there. So I'm just going to fill in some of the holes. It's like a pinky gray, the skin underneath all of that. Try not to go over the nice sort of crisp whites that you've just done. But yeah, that kind of works a little bit. And again, it's a different colour. The more different colours that you have, the better. You can even see a couple little pinks in there. And a little bit of pink up and over. And this is just in that section there as well. It looks quite nice. That works as quite a nice transition from the darker area there um, through to the lighter. It might be we need to go back over some of those areas with some dark, and that's fine. We've still got some um, pastel mat we can play with. Okay, get a bit carried away there. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the white again. This time I'm going to sharpen it a bit more. I'm going to really work on defining those top hairs. The only other thing I do need to bear in mind is that we've got to get whiskers done um, towards the end. Um, so I need to make sure I'm not using every last section of every last bit of the pastel mat because um, we're going to need to be able to go like almost scrape it through. So let's um, just create some of these lighter hairs on top. And you're still respecting um, the space between um, between the hairs. So you're still leaving you're leaving gaps. And these hairs here, they need to look like they're integral. That's quite a nice sort of transition now between the dark and the light. I think what I'm going to do though is now go in with the 181. I'm just going to sharpen that and just eke out a couple of little dark bits. Um, 
So we've just got a couple of little sort of tiny little darker areas in between the hairs and it will actually make the hairs that we have done in, in light just make them stand out a little bit more. But you know, leave your pinks there, the, the nice pinks that we've just put in. You know, don't completely obliterate them either. So at this stage I might look at using my um, paper stump just to kind of dot everything into place. Don't smudge it around too much, just dotty. just see the tiny little bits of pastel mat still showing and I don't mind that I don't mind the fact that I've got some layers left to play with as I say because I do need to have a little bit of space for for whiskers so I'm going to go um, back in and just sort of finish off for now sharpen my white pencil again And go in and just create some nice sharp little marks using it sort of lightly but firmly if that makes sense so I'm clasping it quite lightly in my hand resting my hand on the pastel mat you can always use a piece of, piece of um, glassine if you need to and I'm pushing it sort of in a determined manner um, just making a few little brighter marks here. I'm really not following, I've just broken it everywhere. <sighs> Shouldn't really blow. Um, but I do think by the time we get this really nice and light, that will actually work on this section. And don't forget to do some little hairs that are going in the opposite direction. Just to make it look fluffy. You want him to look super cute and fluffy. And then there's a couple of little hairs that are going this way. A couple of little hairs. And just, you know, while you've got it in your hand, a couple of little tweaky bits. Yeah, it kind of comes around here. Better do his ears soon, I suppose. Okay. Okay, I think that's um, that's fine for, for leaving for now. What we're going to do is that next we're going to do the two ears, and then we'll start on the nose and the muzzle. Right. Okay, we're going to work on little Ollie's ear. Now it's a very, very small area that we're going to be working on here. So, um, you know, we're just going to make it as punchy and believable as possible, but recognizing the limitations, obviously, of such a small area. So the first thing I would do when I look at this ear is just look at the darks, look at the area that's the absolute darkest that needs to be nice and, nice and dark in there. So really sort of punch that middle section in. Then just coming outside of it, I'm going to, um, probably going to use this, it's quite the, the strong brown, which is the 177. Sorry, I was just using the black just then, it's the 199 from Faber-Castell. Now I'm using the 177. And um, I mean, it's quite, it is quite grey, but we can pop some grey over that. I just quite like having the depth that the 177 gives you. OK. 
Okay. I'm not sure what um so I think it kind of comes to there. Okay, so we've got a nice coating there of dark colours, the, the nice rich brown, which is the 177, together with the black. And I'm just going to push them into the canvas a little bit with the cotton bud. So I'm not going to get too worried, it's only a little ear, we just want it to be believable. Thank you, Dokey. Well, what should we go for next? So I've got another grey here. Um, this is the 181. I just want to get rid of this line that we've done. I'm trying to work out what. I'm going to work out what line I did. This is where tracing actually becomes a bit more of a problem. So when you look at the original line that we did, that's the inside of the ear and that's the outside around there. So yeah, this is the sort of fluffy bit. So it does sort of come to here. Okay, that makes sense. Um, but the whole of this area isn't all dark, so I don't know really what's happened there, but that's okay. That's something for us to, to work on. So the next thing I'm gonna do, um, I'm just gonna use this 181. Again, this is another similar sort of depth um, as the 177 brown and the black, um, but this time it's a gray. And I'm just going to cut through this line that we've created there, just to sort of get rid of it a bit. I'm going to make, I'm going to bring back the 199, the black, and just make that darker section a little bit darker and also a bit bigger. Because I think that is a bit bigger just in there. Okay, so now we've got lots of depth in there. We now need to start creating some little hairs on top. So we've got some greys in there, we've got some browns, all of a similar sort of depth, but nice and punchy and dark. Because you want you know, people to know from afar that that is the ear. Okay, so that's nice and... Okay. So I think I'm gonna bring in um, sort of like a mid-grey now, which is the 233. And I'm just gonna play with bringing some little hairs in. It doesn't show up an awful lot, and we're gonna be putting some more on top, but it just shows up enough to start creating some structure into the ear. Be careful not to um, obliterate this lovely dark midsection that you've created. That's very easy to do. In fact, I've, I've done it a little bit, so I'm just gonna pop it back in, back in just there. So that we're starting to see a bit of difference between um, the very dark darks and the um, sort of slightly lighter grey that we just did. Now I'm going back in, um, in between those um, dark greys, the 181 that I've just, not 181, sorry, the, uh, the 233, again all Faber-Castell I'm doing on this um, particular tutorial. And I'm just going back in between with the black just so we can again see a little bit of difference between um, the darks and the lights, or the darks and the mid-tones, I should say. There's no lights on there yet. And I'm just using my paper stump just to press it all in. Okay, so that's looking quite a nice little ear. Now what I want to do um, is start getting some of the lighter hairs on top. So we've got um, some browns and some greys that I can see there. I'm sort of mindful of the fact it's naturally looking a bit darker in the photograph because the ears are wet. Um, this is the 280 that I'm popping in now. Just a couple of little brownie bits. The 280 is quite a nice warm brown. Just popping in a few there. And um, to really now show up those lighter ones, I'm going to use the 270. It's a very nice grey, this 270, actually. It's, it's quite white and looks like white from, from a distance, but it's just slightly off-white. 
so that when you don't want something to show up too, too much, it's there for you. Okay. And just do a couple of tiny little light bits just in there. Maybe a couple of in there. And a nice thing to do is to flick some little hairs over from the head. Well, the other thing I'm gonna do actually, while I'm here, I just noticed when I was looking at it before, that this section here underneath the eye needs a bit more definition. So I'm just going to pop that in. There are always little bits that you see when you when you sort of leave it overnight and you come back to it in the morning. And that's fine, that's that's all good. Just a couple of bits there. And then um, maybe just bring back a couple of like little when I'm doing <laughs> when I'm doing lighter strokes, I've realised I start whispering. It's um So we've got some nice chunky marks in there. Now I just want a few more sort of delicate ones. And obviously in the reference photograph they are chunky because he's wet. But as I say, we want him to look a, a little bit like the sun's just hit him for a few minutes. I can't help myself fiddling. But you know, in order to show you my process I have to show it exactly as it is, which is tweaking, tweaking and tweaking. Okay, I am going to, so the very top bit of the ear here is the absolute lightest. You can see that the sun's hitting it. So I'm just gonna give it an overall coating of gray. So I'm not actually lifting um, my hand from the surface here. I'm literally just giving it a proper coating, and that makes quite a difference actually. And then you could bring, from the coating, the outside coating, you can kind of just bring it in. And then the only other thing that will add to that is just a peak highlight, tiny little highlight just here. And that's enough, that's one little ear. Okay, so while we're in an eerie mood, let's um, just move this. And move it along so you can see it. Let's get it central. Okay. So same again with the other ear then. Um, obviously this ear is slightly more um, towards the light, but to start out I'm still going to pop that um, in a bit in with black. Let's make it really nice and rich. Same again, I'm going to use my 177 as like a coating base layer. This, I'm using it on the side, so I'm not poking it into the surface and damaging the tooth of the paper. Just giving it a rough coating. Okay. Um, and on this one, I'm going to go straight in with my 280, which is that slightly lighter brown just because it is, it does have a little bit more light on it. You won't really be able to see it at this stage. Okay. Going to be using my um, little paper stump, pushing it all in, making it all nice and sort of smoky and this can be the bit where you think, ah, now I've lost everything I've just achieved, but you have to push through that. You do need a nice soft base layer to work from. Okay, so that's a good base layer. Now, what should we do? What should we do? Um, so I think I might try, it's really quite brown that ear, isn't it? But I do want it to match the other ear. So I'm gonna go back in with my 233 
um, and just pop a few little, few little flicky bits in there as we did before. And I'm going to go uh, back into the midsection, obviously where I um, scrubbed it all in. I just want to intensify that midsection a bit more. Okay, and now at this point, I think I'm just gonna go straight in with the 270, which is this lighter gray, which is more or less my top color, bar the absolute last minute um, peak highlight. And I'm just going to flick a few bits in there, just inside the ear a little bit. I might go over them, I'm just gonna see how it looks, because that's, um, I'm gonna go over them with this um, 280, because this 280 is a really nice brown. I'm just doing it very softly, just because that ear is quite brown. Um, let's just pop some of those in. Just gently in the in the very dark areas, just be quite gentle because you don't want to lose that nice deep dark black that you had. And then, um, uh, let's have a look. So I'm pressing a little bit harder in places where I want the highlights to be a little bit lighter, a little bit more determined. Okay. And then the only other thing I will do is again have a look for my absolute peak highlights. We've got the sun hitting it around about there. Got a couple of little bits just here. Yeah, there's so little room to play with. And then you have I'm just gonna sharpen my pencil even further. Just broken it. Let's see if I can find another one. Okay, I'm just going to try and sort this out and come straight back.